What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're looking at rehab exercises for shoulder bursitis. This is typically pain that occurs up here, the subacromial bursa that's right underneath this bone, the acromion. So if you get pain towards the top, kind of outside of your shoulder, maybe it goes down your arm when reaching overhead, this video will be for you. So when we think about this subacromial bursitis, again, that bursa is up here under the bone in that subacromial space, there are other structures that are also present there. One is a rotator cuff tendon, uh, our muscle called supraspinatus, its tendon runs right through here. And then also the tendon for bicep, one of the tendons of our bicep muscle also goes right up here in the joint. So we've got a rotator cuff tendon, a bicep tendon, and a bursa right next to each other. So Many people are diagnosed with bursitis and actually have tendinopathy. They have an irritation of one of those tendons. So basically, it's hard to differentiate with testing what people have. Do you have bursitis? Do you have a tendinopathy? We can't always tell with clinical tests, but it doesn't really change what we do in rehab a lot. So the video, the exercises I'm going to show today will help you with bursitis and will help with addressing and strengthening the tendons just in case you also have tendinopathy. Okay, so we're gonna look at four exercises, so let's go ahead and jump into them. So early on in this process, when your pain is more acute and irritable, we're gonna focus really on mobility. And one of the things that happens with bursitis and tendinopathy in the subacromial space is that people will tend to have pain when they reach overhead. So you just wanna be careful to modify those activities if you're, you play racket sports or you're a swimmer. If you're, do, if you're participating in activities that are flaring this up, make sure you dial those back or temporarily eliminate them to let the shoulder calm down. And then we're gonna implement mobility exercises so that we don't lose mobility. Sometimes if people have irritation in their rotator cuff tendons or the bursa and they stop moving their shoulder, they're more likely to develop frozen shoulder. So we don't wanna go down that route and the thing that's gonna help us avoid that are mobility exercises. Now, since reaching overhead is the thing that hurts most people, that's what we're gonna focus on in terms of mobility. But instead of just having you go ahead and just start reaching, which is gonna cause pain, we're gonna use some other strategies to work on that mobility, but also do it with less pain. So the first one here is called a table slide. You can use a countertop at your house or a table like this. What you're gonna do is take your painful arm, so if my right arm's the painful arm, I'm gonna set it here on the table and put the pinky side of my hand down so that my thumb's up. And then what I'm gonna do is lean forward with my trunk, which forces my arm to go overhead. But by using the table, my muscles aren't having to work. My shoulder muscles get to stay relaxed. So I'm just gonna bend forward and stretch my shoulder. I'm just gonna kinda go up and down and do repetitions like that. So I'm just working on my shoulder flexion mobility and allowing the table to just let my arm slide so that I don't have to use my muscles like I would if I was just doing it this way. So this is what's gonna hurt. So if I use the table, this will reduce pain. It allows me to work on what's called passive range of motion. So my arm is passively moving because the table, an external object is, is forcing it overhead. You can even get down here and just kind of hold. But usually what we have people do is run through, you know, two to three sets of this, looking at about 10 to 15 repetitions. And you can do this throughout the day uh, in the beginning of rehab while your shoulder is calming down. Okay, so that's our first exercise a table slide. All right, so our second exercise is another mobility exercise. If the table slide gets to be easy, you can go through full range of motion, you have minimal symptoms, then you would progress to this one, which is called a wall crawl. So again, it's gonna work on overhead shoulder mobility, but it's gonna keep those shoulder muscles sort of relaxed, a little more relaxed to limit pain and stress on those sensitive tissues. So for the wall crawl, again, I'm gonna take my painful arm, I'm just gonna come up to the wall and just basically walk my hand up. So this allows my hand to sort of, some of my weight goes into the wall, so I don't have to use my muscles and tendons as much. And then I'm just gonna reach up as far as I can. If you hit a point of pain, then just go up and down to that point. And eventually we're looking to, you know, get up to the point where you can get all the way up and kind of get full shoulder flexion against the wall. You kind of have to turn your head away to get that full mobility. But again, in the beginning, just like the table slide, kind of work on going up and down the wall to your point of pain, to that pain barrier. And over time, this will get easier and easier. And of course, at a certain point, you know, you won't need the wall, and then you'll just step away from it and start going through just full range shoulder flexion without the wall. So just leading with your thumb like we did on the table slide and then just reaching up as far as you can. So 
that's kind of the end progression. Can I get back to lifting full arm weight and not needing the help of the table or the wall? Okay, so those are our two primary mobility exercises. Once you can do those and your pain is not too bad, then you'll go to these next two, which are gonna help to strengthen the two tendons that run up inside the subacromial space. All right, so our third exercise here, again, is gonna be one to strengthen one of the tendons. We're gonna focus on bicep, the bicep long head tendon, which goes inside the joint in that subacromial space. So the way we're gonna do this is with a dumbbell, and we're gonna do an uppercut type movement. We actually use an uppercut type test to test people to see if their bicep tendon is what's causing their pain. So like that test, the exercise is gonna be very similar. So I'm gonna take a dumbbell. You wanna find one that's challenging for you but doesn't create more than moderate symptoms. With tendinopathies, it's okay to have mild to moderate pain during the exercise as long as you're not flared up later and into the next day. So just find that weight that's right for you. With this exercise, I'm gonna start with the dumbbell down kinda of at my side, and then I'm gonna supinate my forearm, I'm gonna rotate so my palms up, and then basically do an uppercut up to kinda, of, you know, kinda of up to like that chin height where my hand's kinda of at chin height, and then I'm gonna rotate back down. I'm gonna do reps like that, where I rotate, come up, and kinda of uppercut. So this will again work that bicep tendon. Most people think of their bicep as just doing curls, and that's the elbow portion, but it also helps to move our shoulder through flexion. So we're coming up like this, working that upper part of the bicep tendon as it goes up inside the joint. With this exercise and the next one, you're gonna go for three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions. Again, find that weight that you can feel it working and it's challenging, but it's not causing a flare up in your shoulder pain. Okay, so that's our first one a bicep uppercut exercise. All right, our last exercise is our rotator cuff strengthening exercise. This one's gonna look at external rotation, which is a really important uh, action of our rotator cuff. And again, it's gonna help that supraspinatus muscle, the other tendon that goes through that subacromial space. So for this one, you're gonna, I've got a piece of TheraTube here. This works really well for this. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna know where to get one of these. Then you're just gonna take a, uh, small hand towel, you're gonna to roll it up, put it in between your elbow and your side, that helps to focus on the rotational movement. And then essentially what I'm gonna do with this exercise is start with my, secure the tube, start with my hand by my stomach, and then I'm gonna go out through external rotation out to this far. That's how far the shoulder joint should go through external rotation, about 70 degrees when our elbow is at our side. Now, for some people, when their pain is a little more severe, it will be hard to do this on their own. So what you can do in that case is use your other arm to grab the tube and help pull it out so it takes stress off of the painful shoulder and then you'll let go and then slowly lower back in with your painful side. That's called an eccentric contraction. The muscle fibers are contracting and lengthening on that direction. On the way out, this is concentric and this is harder. This tends to create more pain in the beginning of rehab. So that's why you use the other arm to help pull that band, get it set there, do a small isometric hold, and then slowly over about three to four seconds, do a slow eccentric. And that will really help to strengthen that tendon but in a way that doesn't create as much pain. Again, so then use that arm and then slowly come back in. And as you get better over time, try to do all of it with your painful shoulder. Again, looking at no more than that three to four out of 10 pain. Uh, and especially if you're flared up the next day, then it was probably too much. You gotta do something with less resistance or fewer repetitions. So like the last exercise, shoot for three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions every day or every other day with this exercise. Okay, you guys, so those are our four exercises for subacromial bursitis or tendinopathy depending on what you might have going on. A lot of people have both going on. So work on calming things down first, some of the mobility exercises, the first two, and then as things calm down, you can start implementing the strengthening exercises, which will help with pain and reduce the likelihood you get this again in the future. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section and I'll get back to you. See you next time, bye.